I used to pray for times like this, and then they came. Team, keep it clean. This was crazy. Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman, we know they've been doing their thing, and they've really been having that chemistry with Lamar Jackson. Zay Flowers done had it since last year. He a Florida Raven, but Rashad Bateman, he's really been picking it up with Lamar Jackson this year. And while they don't have the eye-popping numbers, even though Zay Flowers is 11th in receiving yards, not in the AFC North, not even in the AFC, but in the NFL. Zay Flowers, yes, RZ Flowers is 11th in receiving yards in the whole league. Let's talk about it. But anyway, while they don't have the most eye-popping numbers for wide receivers, Wednesday Flowers and Rashad Bateman's numbers have been called. They pick up. They pick up. And they've been doing their thing. But now to actually see them get public recognition in more ways than... Let's get straight into it. So, Dan Ovlowski... And Harry Douglas, two former, not just NFL analysts, but two former NFL players. Dan Ovlowski was, of course, a quarterback. Harry Douglas was a wide receiver for the Falcons. They said this. They were ranking the best QB wide receiver duos, not in the AFC North, not in the AFC, but in the NFL, the entire league. And this is who they said. They said, number one. It's C.J. Stroud and Nico Collins. Hey, they've they been doing their thing. Like, give it up to them. They've been doing what they've been having to do. Shout out to them boys. Anyway, uh, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I mean, we, we got firsthand experience against those guys. And we know, we more than know what they're capable of. Number three, Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans. <laughs> we getting ready to get a firsthand look at them this uh, Monday night. And I, th you know what? I'm going to save what I got to say in our game preview for that. Anyway, but number four. Again, in the whole league, number four, Lamar Jackson and Zay Flower. Who would have thought, man? Again, this is not a quarterback and tight end duo. This is not a quarterback and a running back duo. No, this is a quarterback and a wide receiver duo. And we are getting nationally recognized. We're getting respect. Our wide receivers are getting respect. Talk about it, man. We got to. This is amazing. I love seeing this. And then number five. Wow, number five, Sam Donald and Justin Jefferson. So he put Zay Flowers ahead of Justin Jefferson. A lot of people who, a, lot, a person who a lot of people feel like is the number one receiver in the game. Zay Flowers and Lamar Jackson ahead of the, Let's talk about it, man. <laughs> I love it. I love But look, that's one thing. And y'all know I love my list. I love going over other people's lists. I don't like making lists of my own. But let's, let's double down. The, 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 the media, the national media was doubling down on Ravens receivers because it didn't stop there. Troy Aikman. I mean, I'm sure y'all familiar with Troy Aikman. He done won a couple Super Bowls over there with the Dallas Cowboys, Hall of Fame quarterback. Oh, you know him. And even though, <laughs> you know, he had his little bout, his little feud with Lamar Jackson this offseason. I don't know how that ended. With them getting the whole going for the back and forth with the likeness. Anyway, this is what Troy Aikman said. So, former Cowboys quarterback Troy Aikman, uh, he said on Dallas wide receivers. So, he's talking about the Dallas Cowboys wide receivers. He said this, I think the routes are terrible. I think they run terrible routes, and I've thought that beyond this year. I think C.D. Lamb has got to improve in his route running. As a quarterback, if you're not certain where guys are going to be consistently, it's hard to play the position. That's what I see. I see guys lazy coming off the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they run. Usually if they do, it's because they're anticipating they're going to get the football on their play. But if they're not, they don't. And it all ties together. I'm not impressed with that part of it. But you might be thinking like, okay, uh, what does that got to do with the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers? Let me tell listen, listen to this. I know you got your volume turned up already, but turn it up louder because you're going to want to hear this for sure. It says, this is still Troy Aikman. And look, this was him. He just said that. Troy Aikman. You know he got love for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, that's where he made his career for the Dallas Cowboys. Won a bunch of Super Bowls over there. Got a Hall of he, is, he was one of them guys. He really was. So listen to this. He said, "What you heard what he just said about the Cowboys wide receivers, right? He said, I just finished watching the Baltimore Ravens because I have them this week. You put on film of theirs and watch their receivers run routes, and they come off the football. So do San Francisco's and Green Bay's and others. But it's hard to play the QB position if you're not certain how guys are going to run routes or where they're going to be. And I'm not speaking for Dak Prescott. Dak may say, hey, 
I think their routes are amazing, but as a former quarterback watching it, it's got to get a lot better. So again, like we saw the list with Daniel Vlosky and Harry Douglas putting Lamar Jackson and Zay Flowers as the number four best quarterback wide receiver duo in the league. But for the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers to be included in this, actually for them to be the headline, of what Troy Aikman was saying. Because he ain't say, I just finished watching uh, the 49ers receive it. No, no, no. He didn't say, I just finished watching uh, the Green Bay Packers. No, no, no. He said, I just finished watching the Baltimore Ravens because I had them this week. Probably for Monday Night Football. And you put on film of theirs and watch their receivers run routes. And they come off the football. And then he included the 49ers and Packers in the mix too. But he started off with us. Is this real? Is this real life? For the Baltimore man, shout out to him. Shout out to him. We already gave a special shout out to Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. Yet, but give him another one. Give him another one because they are playing some really, really good football. And the thing about it too, we know this this offense. The way that this offense is designed, you look at a Dallas Cowboys offense. You think about think about the situation. Obviously, for a Dallas Cowboys offense, those receivers are going to expect to catch a lot more footballs over there, right? Yeah, of course. You think about Green Bay Packers, who he mentioned too. The, their receivers are expected to catch a lot more footballs over there too, right? Yes. You even think about the San Francisco 49ers. Their receivers would even be expected to catch a lot more passes that way because out of those four teams, the Cowboys, the 49ers, the Packers, and the Baltimore Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens are by far – the biggest running team out of those four. So receivers over here, they wouldn't be expected to catch as many balls. And they don't, but the fact that you don't expect to catch as many footballs as you would if you were in any one of those other three offenses, but you're still putting in that effort. You're still showing effort every single play. And not only do the Baltimore Ravens coaching staff notice it, but people around the league are noticing it and people who got an eye for football they noticing it and they commending you and they showing you respect and showing you i love that for them i love that because it says so much it shows that again when their number is called they pick up but not only that they showing that it's not all about them they're showing how dedicated they are to the team something that's huge when it comes to football teams especially Baltimore Ravens, especially Baltimore Ravens offense, is especially as a pass catcher in Baltimore Ravens offense, you have to buy in. And it's, if you don't, I get it. It ain't for everybody. It's really not. And receivers here, woo, <laughs> we know. It ain't always the best when it comes to numbers and stats. And, ooh, ooh, but, but, hey, it's doable. It's doable. And it's something where you're not going to have the sexy numbers every single day. You're not going to be top five in receiving yards. No, that's not over here. No. I mean, even though the way Baltimore Ravens like, they like, look, we can get it in so many different ways. We can make it happen. We want to make a receiver top five receiving yards. We want a, a receiver to get the most re receiving yards in a week. Like they did this past week, I believe, was A Flowers. They said, we can make it happen. However we want to slice it, we're going to slice it. Ravens been doing that. They sh they've been showing, like, look, we're not even peaking yet. <laughs> Shout out to Lamar. You know you don't want to peak too early. But we ain't even peaking yet. And this is how it's been happening. So I, I love that. But it, it truly shows how much of team players they are. So, again, shout out to Zay Flowers. Shout out to Rashad Bateman. And, and shout out to everybody because it's not just those two. It takes a group effort. It takes all 11 on the field to make it happen. Obviously, Lamar Jackson will get them the ball. Obviously, Ty Monkin to make the play calls. Lamar Justin, Lamar to make his adjustments and whatnot. The offensive line for them to block. It, it takes everybody. But the Ravens have been making it happen. And it's nice for it to be acknowledged. We talked about Brandon Stevens earlier this week, and we know one of his biggest issues. His biggest issue is just getting his head turned around and making a play on the ball. So what did the Baltimore Ravens do? How are they responding to what Brandon Stevens really needs to work on? Well, they're coaching him up on it. Because Ryan Mink said the following. He said, Nate Wiggins 
is getting extra deep ball reps in with Brandon Stevens and a surprise guest, Devontae's Walker after practice. He said Nate's working on getting his head around because that's something that he needed to work on too. I don't think it's quite on the level of Brandon Stevens yet, but we don't want it to get there. And we want Brandon Stevens to get better. We want Nate Wiggins to get better. And this is a beautiful thing. See, that, that's one thing I've been loving about the Baltimore Ravens, especially on defense this year. Wow, we see what the issues are. They see what the issues are too. So what have they been doing? They've been slowly making some adjustments, trying to fix some stuff. We saw one of the big issues with the Baltimore Ravens has been Eddie Jackson. He, he's been a little out of line, missing some coverages and whatnot. What did they do this past game? They had Ardarius Washington out there playing safety a lot. And I'm like, okay, nice and improved. I like that, Ravens. So now with Nate Wiggins, with Brandon Stevens, both of them have the same issue. I don't think it's on the same level. But, again, they see they got the same issue. So what do they do? They, they work in an extra practice to fix it. That's what you got to do. You got to be willing to call out when something's an issue, call out when something's wrong. But it takes an even bigger person to fix it, too. So, I Ravens, thank you. Hey, today has been, you know, you know when you have one of them, like, really good days and just so much good stuff just keep on happening? Today was one of those days for the Baltimore Ravens. Reason being because they got some familiar faces back at practice. One of those was Broderick Washington. Their defensive lineman who is in, what, the second year of his contract extension? Or is it actually the third? I think it's the second year. Either way, Broderick Washington, he is back. But also... Somebody who returned to practice after trying to return about a week and a half ago, but then they had a little setback. It's like, oh, okay, cool. After our secondary has been having a good amount of issues, but it ain't because of personnel. But if you have even better personnel, it can help. Arthur Mullet. Arthur Millette return to practice today, and him being back is a beautiful thing because we got a lot of depth. And like they, we got a lot of depth in the secondary. We really do. And having him there just adds to it that much more. So we're happy that he's back. That's a beautiful thing. Now, not everybody came back because uh, Deontay Hardy and Malik Harrison and Brent Urban, they were not out there, unfortunately. So hopefully they can get healthy ASAP uh, moving forward. Now, Somebody else who uh, is back with the Ravens, who got cut a couple days ago, uh, was solid, the offensive lineman. But they signed him back to the practice squad today. So now we hear my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. You want to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you send it directly on Patreon. Let's get it to the first question from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Keontae. He said, yo, what's up, Engraver? What's up, Key? He said, I got something I like your opinion on. Jamal Adams just... No thanks, no thanks, no thanks, no thanks, no thanks. But let me hear you out. He said, Jamal Adams just got cut, but something tells me he's not done. Bring him in on a practice squad at linebacker for passing downs. I mean, it sounds like a Madden move, and I know this is real life, but I would think it would be a good move. And to one of the questions yesterday, oh, well, let's, let's talk about that first. Well, it, it wouldn't hurt to have him on a practice squad just to see. Just to see. Ravens were obviously a little bit interested in him earlier this offseason. I think it was more of a smokescreen type of thing. I think they were looking at somebody else because nothing ended up happening with him. Uh, he was still a free agent, and they could have signed him if they wanted to, but they didn't. They went in another direction. Um, but, yeah, I guess as a linebacker role, but not a, as a safety, no. A safety, no, but as more of a linebacker, maybe could because, hey, he know how to blitz, and he know how to tackle. So, hey, you know what? Yeah, I, I take it back. On a practice squad, it couldn't hurt. Um, but he also said, and to one of the questions yesterday on what we should go after at the trade deadline, I say a running back like a Leonard Fournette or a Rashad White that we could do a sneaky extension with. So when Henry prices himself out of Baltimore, we can still have a bell cow. What are your thoughts? No. Go to the draft. Go to the draft for a running back. Um, I, I don't think uh, they would need to trade for a running back at the draft. I, no. And then, then you're getting ready to get Keaton Mitchell back soon too. So I, I wouldn't do that. He also said Mike Williams as a rental would be the big speedy target we need. I feel like it's a Ravens move too. Ah. Uh, I, it might just be me. Um, if it, Mike Williams was healthy, yeah. But Mike Williams, he 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 just I don't know. Maybe it's because he was in New York with Aaron Rod. Maybe he wasn't feeling Aaron. Rod. I don't know. But he just he didn't really look good to me, especially in that that last game. I, uh, Mike Williams, nah. O line still sus. Next question came from my guy Terrence. He said, "Ain't Graven. What's up, Terrence? Uh, I think we're giving O line a bit too much credit." Ooh. 
he said, I think play calling has been helping them out. But more importantly, they weren't playing against Max Crosby and Chris Jones the last few weeks. We play in the AFC North with TJ Watt, Miles Garrett. If all line struggles like they did early in the season, when they played against elite pass rushers, I see the Ravens struggling to get wins in the division. We have already proven to be able to lose to those teams to fight poor QB play. What do you think? Keep up the amazing work. Best Terrence. Hey, appreciate you. Now, um, with that, you said it. You said that. Uh, you think that we're giving the O-line too much credit, but the uh, all the play calling has been helping them out. So, when we do go against those better pass rushers, like you mentioned, a T.J. Watt, like a Miles Garrett, it's important that the play calling still helps them out. I, I think that's super important. Why the offensive line? Yeah, they've been better. But, yeah, we ain't been going against the best of the best as far as defensive lines and whatnot. But still, when they go up against those better guys, th they can keep feeding off of each other. The play calling can help them out. They can help out the play calling. They can help out Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. Everybody can help out each other. I think that's super, super important, no matter who you're going up against. So I, I get you. The quality of competition has not been the best in the world, but, hey, they still been doing their thing. So I, I still give them credit. I see what you're saying. But I will still give them credit too. Next question came from my guy here. He said, Hello, and Graven, the team, keep it clean family. I hope everyone is doing well and are enjoying the Ravens offense. I can't wait for the defensive side to catch up so we can say we are enjoying Raven football, period. Listening to the trades of Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper, I was wondering what we could do to become even more fierce. My first thought was to get rid of Harbaugh, but he isn't messing anything up, so I'll tolerate him for now. LOL. <laughs> He said, the one thing I think we're missing is a big X receiver. We haven't had that since Anquan Bowden left. I think it's time to get one for Lamar. Into the Tennessee Titans for us. I know a lot of members, including yourself, are probably getting excited talking about, let's go get D-Hop. Though I love him, he is not the Titan receiver I'm talking about. I think we should trade a fifth for Trey Lombergs. He is six two, 225, and has great hands. What he hasn't had was a great QB and a scheme fit to his skill set. He was drafted to replace A.J. Brown and his similarities to him, but... He ain't him. Uh, in the Ravens offense, he would be asked to run block to make tough catches, but wouldn't be asked to be anything more than a third receiving option behind Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. So he's replacing Nelly, uh, essentially. That allows all the receivers to grow and get better around Lamar Jackson. Plus, with the prices of receivers skyrocketing, I think this is a low-risk, high-reward to have three first-round wide receivers all under the age of 25 combined, making less than uh, 15 mil per year. And if it works out, have them all back for next season for about the same price. This will allow us to spend the money or draft capital on the offensive line. <laughs> He said a safety to replace Marcus Williams and a cornerback and an edge rusher. I want this to be the beginning of the Ravens dynasty. Your thoughts. Woo. I remember um, there was a lot of talk about him coming out of the draft when he was a rookie years ago. Um, but, yeah, it's all, of course, died down. And then you, you do got to think context is important. You talked about him not really just having a quarterback like that to get on the ball. Um Pressure is a lot with when it comes to first round, just not even just first round dra draft picks, just draft picks in general. Um, context is super important. Situation that makes all the difference in the world. Um, and he had what Ryan Tannehill uh, for a little bit, and then I guess Malik Willett for a tiny bit. Who was the other quarterback besides them two? I don't even remember. But it oh, and now Will Levis obviously, but um, he fell out of favor. I didn't even think he was gonna make the roster. I remember there were rumors about him. Um, getting traded even before the season started like in the off season but it obviously didn't happen uh it would be a low risk type of thing uh i know it would be very underwhelming uh if the baltimore ravens were to trade for him um and i, I just i just wonder like if they were to trade for him how i don't want to say necessarily invested would they be in him but i guess if he were to replace nelly whether it be now or in the future <sighs> What do you do? Because if he fell out of favor in Tennessee with the wide receivers in Tennessee, um, then what would he do with the Baltimore? You, you get what I'm getting at? Because it's, it's like if you ain't make it over there as a wide receiver, what are you going to do over here? How big of an impact are you going to have over here uh, as a wide receiver? Um, and I think with the Baltimore Ravens, they really like Nelly. Uh, he's a veteran. He done been there, done that. With Traylon Burks, he's not. He has not been there or done that. Um, and uh, – He's young, so you, you got to remember that part. You know, Raven, Raven don't like trading for no young wide receivers like that, man. But um, I, I just – I don't feel like they would be very invested in – and I know things are changing with the Baltimore Ravens, especially they, with their passing the offense. We've been seeing it. But I just don't feel like the Ravens they, – they might not get the most out of him because they got a Zay Flowers and they got a Rashad Bateman in front of him. Cape song for Marcus Williams. Next question came from my guy, Infinite Dreams. He said, hey, Raven, I've been listening to all this Marcus Williams slander. Amongst our fan base. And while I do agree that our secondary is definitely lacking and looking like Swiss cheese on crucial third downs. 
I cannot solely accuse Marcus Williams for his recent performance. Instead, I think this accountability should go towards Zach Orr. I agree with that. Um, I, I've been saying myself that uh, while Marcus Williams has not been the best, uh, the bigger issue with the Ravens' defense overall has just it's been the scheme. Uh, they got players that can play, that can make plays, that have made plays, but it's just been the scheme to me. Uh, but anyway, continue. He said, um, as far as Marcus Williams, I believe he is a baller, but I'm also a I'm doing my assignment kind of guy, which worked for him in the past because the assignment has always been correct. But with Zach Orr doing the play calling, I don't have confidence that his assignment is the right one and is an indirect victim, Marcus Williams, as a result. Uh, now, I do think that Zoe will eventually get it together, especially once Dean Pease is there to advise him. Uh, thank you and Graven for the content and hope the family is good and much love from California, West Coast, baby. Shout out to that boy, Infinite Dreams, man. But yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I think you're spot on. Um, I think that Zach Orr is just still getting a feel of the game as a defensive coordinator. And it's taking, it's taking more time than we would like it to. But And I know everybody's going to compare him to Mike McDonald, obviously, because that was the last defensive coordinator that we had. And he started off rough. But once he got it together, it was like, ooh. But we got to remember, Mike McDonald had been a defensive coordinator before over at Michigan. So this was not his first time. A different situation, obviously, but still. He had experience being a defensive coordinator. Zach Orr never has been a defensive coordinator. It's his very first time. There's a big opportunity, big responsibility. And he's done a lot of good things, but he done some, He got some things that he could do a little bit better. And we're rooting for him. We, we hope that this thing gets turned around. But, again, with Dean bringing Dean Pease in, that was nice. Uh, like we talked about earlier with the, 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 the defensive backs working on turnaround and, and making plays on the football, that can, it's, it's, just, it's all the little things. Again, shout out to Mark Ingram. It's all about the details. So once Ravens, they correct and fine-tune these details, they should be a lot better. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, hoping all is well with Team Keep It Clean and their families in Florida. I hey, appreciate that. He said, and hope all is well with you and your family. But think about this. Chip Kelly would be a good or bad idea as a head coach. Um, <laughs> based off of uh, his previous experience being a head coach, I would say it's a bad idea because we hey look we love the no huddle we love it love it love it we love when Ravens get a no huddle that up tempo offense but it ain't got to be every single play every single snap every single get you gotta slow down a little bit so I would lean on the side of no. Next question also came from Michael, but a different Michael. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the fam are good. Let me get straight into it. Oh, my boy said, I ain't playing no games. I ain't messing around. Let's get straight to it. He said, while I'm happy we got the win, I can't help but feel like we need to figure something out with our corners, particularly Brandon Stevens. With him, it's weird because he's always there, but he just doesn't make the play. I don't understand why Zach Orr doesn't give him help over the top. Stevens makes every wide receiver he guards look like an all-star. And look at that. He sent this on October 13th, so that was... Days ago But look, look what they're working on They're working on the deep ball They're working on Brandon Stevens Getting his head turned around So see They're working on it So it's, it's a work in progress It's one of those things where You just hope that he can Just turn it around And, and just get it right Hopefully He also said Um I've been thinking about this Upcoming Monday Night Football game Against the Bucks As much as I love the Ravens And want the win I don't think we'll come out with this one Due to our secondary play Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers offense is playing lights out and a sneaky good or a sneaky good team. If our secondary shows up, I feel like we can win, but I won't hold my breath due to what they have shown so far. I respect it. Uh, I, I get it. I get why you would say that. But I thought that last week was going to be the week where our defense, especially pass defense, they just been down in the dumps. They've been bad. They've been giving up all these yards, all these points. But Ravens were like, nope, this, that's not going to be the week. Oh, we're going to give up all the yards and all the points. Well, at least way less points than they end up, the, the Ravens end up getting. So the Ravens won. Maybe, it's, maybe this is the week. Maybe this is the week. Especially going against Mike Evans, going against Godwin. Like, Ravens know the task that's in front of them. And I expect Marlon Humphrey, and I, I know they're not going to have him follow him. Maybe they should. Because I remember Marlon Humphrey he did pretty good against Mike Evans before. But Marlon, this is Marlon Humphrey's game right here. This is Marlon Humphrey's game because to get physical. With them outsiders, like a Mike Evans especially. And Baker Mayfield, gonna, he going to throw him the ball. So you get Mar put Marlon Humphrey on Mike Evans. And with Brandon Stevens, hopefully that the, the, the drills worked with him turning around on the ball. Because this, this, this is a Marlon Humphrey game to me, though. This, this is a Marlon Humphrey game for sure. So I expect him to, to really be involved in this game heavy a lot. Um, so it's exciting, but yeah, maybe this could be the game where the defense they actually do get it turned around. Because again, I, I see why I see why you feel that way, but at the same time, the way I'm feeling, like, look, 
Mike Evans, Godwin, Baker, Mayfield, whatever. Let's get it, man. Let, 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 let's get it. Them Ravens, they, they know they, they playing in Florida, too. <laughs> come on now, Ravens. Like, y'all know how y'all normally do when y'all come down here to Florida. Like, minus that one Miami game. Oh, ooh, yuck. But all the other games, we all come down to Florida, y'all make it happen. Let's continue that. Next question came from Keegan. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Key? He said, I found your channel back during COVID and have watched ever since. Oh, appreciate that. We didn't like the situation, but I appreciate that you've been rocking with us since 2020. He said, I look forward to listening to your videos every day while, while working. Well, you know, hey, some of these videos be super long, so they might cover a whole shift. But I appreciate it. He said, I haven't ever sent in a question, but here we go. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Uh, let's be realistic. EDC is not going to trade for an offensive player. So looking on the defensive side of the ball, I got a guy in mind that us Ravens fans wanted a while back. The Honey Badger. We don't have, we don't have hardly any money in Eddie Jackson, and him and Marcus Williams simply aren't getting it done. The Saints are self-imploding, and I could see them shipping some pieces away. We also are looking to make a deep playoff run, and guess who I'm sure he knows his biggest weakness and how he thinks having played with him for so long Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs given we will more than likely have to go through them to get to the game we all want to the Super Bowl hope all is well and God bless oh that's an interesting one the honey badger Tyron Matthew oh man I remember was it last no it was two off seasons ago yeah because it, it was when we signed Marcus Williams so I guess is that technically three off seasons because this is his third year with the Ravens so I guess three off seasons ago, right before you signed Marcus Williams, um, there was rumors that the Ravens were interested in Tyron Matthew and the Honey Badger, um, but obviously it didn't happen. They went with Marcus Williams, and I and I was happy with that. I, I liked the Marcus Williams signing a lot because I'm thinking like, man, they got a good safety. He's in his prime, and they paid him a good amount of money. Okay, let's go. And Marcus, he, he was great. He started off great, but then he got hurt. Then he, next year he started off great, then he got hurt, and this year he's healthy. It ain't been so great um, I don't think they would trade for a safety Simply because they have so many safeties I think before they traded for a safety Even Honey Badger I think before they traded for a safety They would just I don't think they would trade for a safety I think they would just move their own guys around um, I could even see them uh, Is Daryl Worley on a practice squad? I'm not sure if he is I could even see them possibly bringing him back And give him a shot But I, I just I don't think they're going to put trade capital into getting yet another safety you got marcus williams on a big contract you got kyle hamilton getting ready to be on a big contract soon enough uh you sign eddie jackson you got all darius washington you got bo bray you got sanusi kane um so you got a lot of guys at the set hey, you got did i mention eddie jackson i don't remember if i did or not but you got a lot of guys at the safety position i, I don't think they were bringing another safety next question came from my guy vaughn he said zach always putting cover zero at the wrong time he needs to stop it's not working and yeah i saw a lot of people say that uh, especially on that uh fourth down it was fourth and super long and he sent a blitz and i, and I get it you want to throw the the opposing team off because that, that's like that's wing type stuff right there remember the uh the fourth and what the fourth and 17 fourth and whatever where he sent that blitz and then he sent some people on the blitz but then he faked cj Mosley like he was listening to cj Mosley backed up and ended up catching that pick oh no it wasn't even fourth and 17 it was like four maybe it was fourth and six i forgot what it was in that browns game week 17 in 2018 but anyway um yeah, uh, it was just it was just rough situation to leave, man. Um, you had Nate Wiggins one on one. Was it with Scary Terry or was it with um, oh, number eighty five? Oh, I forget his name. I don't even remember. But you just put your guys one on one, and I don't think that was the best decision to make uh, in that situation. And yeah, hopefully again Zach or just learn from these mistakes. Next question came from my boy John. He said, "Boy, oh boy, did I call this?" What up, everyone? Hope all is well with you. I don't know if you remember or not, but before the season started, when we acquired 22, I pointed out that we will see Lamar using traditional play action. Was I right or was I right? The play action has opened the field so much for Lamar. It certainly has for Lamar, for the receivers, for Ravens offense as a whole. And it's been a beautiful thing to see. He says, because of the threat of 22, a lot of teams have been playing single high safety in order to stop the run. Oh, yeah, they've been selling out. Uh, he said, now the whole team is eating. I think the first two losses we acquired were from coaching. Todd Monkey getting a little cutesy instead of smash mouth football. But now that we are just letting 22 uh, do what he came to do, our offense looks stronger than ever. It, it, it has been. And it, I don't even, it ain't even fully there yet. And he said, however, we have to find... Find that same stride on defense. Uh, after week six, I still can't tell what's really missing. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing missing. Ain't no pieces missing. Ain't like, 
it's, it's culture But it, anyway He said I mean I don't know if they aren't Communicating properly That right there That's a big one right there uh, He said Or if it's coaching oh, There goes another one right So you know what's missing You already know You, you done called it You said it So you knew what's missing He said maybe a combination of both Adam Dean Pease Do you think that's the answer I think it could be part of it Hopefully it is Oh, because hopefully we ain't got no question marks in a couple of weeks, even after this week. But he said, or oh, should some players get benched? Now that that right there, ooh, ooh, now you talking right there? That that could be something. Um, and they started to a little bit like this last game with Eddie Jackson coming off the field for Darius Washington at safety. So could they do that with another position, another player? Who knows He said they played well against the Bills But they were injured Other than that we have given up no less Than 25 points this season That's not Ravens defense Team keep it clean Have a good one Wow Next question came from my guy BB He said since the Raiders seem to be On their own ongoing rebuild mode Do you think the Ravens should go after Max Crosby To absolutely solidify their defense That'd be nice But Raiders ain't They ain't moving him Unless it'll be something like Crazy 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 That they just couldn't refuse But Ravens are not going to give up something that the Raiders couldn't refuse. Uh, he said, this move will put the defense over the top. It would. It would help out a lot, too. It would help the D I mean, not the defense. It would help the DBs out uh, for sure because that would give them way less time to cover. Uh, it, would, it would help everybody, just make everybody's life easier. He said, Max has given Lamar and all other QBs a lot of problems throughout every season. In my opinion, he is better than T.J. Watt. And adding him to this already excellent defense. <laughs> You talking about Ravens defense? Excellent. I, I wouldn't say that. But anyway, uh, adding him to this already excellent defense will put the Ravens in Super Bowl for sure. What would you give for Max if given the opportunity? Oh, I would get, I would get him two first. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll get two first for Max. Somebody like that? Somebody proven like that and consistent like Oh, yeah, take them two first. They all yours.